Munters and Zudicor continue to collaborate and push the envelope of data center cooling possibilities. This video illustrates the latest innovation where processor heat is transported from Zudicor pool boiling cold plates directly to Munters SciCool heat rejection condensers with no intermediate heat exchange devices in between. In this example, there are two hot aisle containment pods, each having a 2.5 megawatt load, yielding 5 megawatts of total load for the data hole, comprised of 80% liquid cooling and 20% air cooling. A single low GWP two-phase working fluid, in liquid phase, is pumped by a unique end-of-row 1 megawatt coolant distribution unit, CDU, that has N plus 1 redundancy. There are two CDUs for each hot aisle containment. The liquid heat transfer coolant moves through a distribution header to the server racks, where it connects with each top of rack supply manifold down to the two-phase cold plates mounted on each individual server. The liquid heat transfer coolant flow is regulated by simple, reliable mechanical float valves that maintain a level of coolant within the cold plates. Unlike traditional single-phase cold plates where the liquid flow remains constant regardless of load, with Zudicor cold plate technology, when there is no load, there is no flow, and therefore no wasted pump energy. An additional benefit of the Zudicor cold plate technology is the inherent readiness to transition from zero to 100% load. The pool of heat transfer coolant within the cold plate is always there and ready to absorb heat, like a mini thermal energy storage system. Additionally, Zudicor's two-phase pool boiling architecture provides a significant advantage in handling transient heat loads, ensuring rapid response to dynamic computing demands without the risk of thermal runaway. This enables efficient cooling even in the most compute-intensive environments. Heat from the semiconductors causes the liquid heat transfer coolant in the cold plates to change phase to a vapor, which rises up and out of the cold plates, connecting to vaporizer manifolds in each rack, and then to a common external vapor header. In this example, the vapor heat transfer coolant flows up the riser to above the roof line, where it connects with two Munter SciCool modular 500 kilowatt condensers, each comprised of five individual 125 kilowatt condensers. Each 125 kilowatt condenser has a separate power supply, controller, and isolation valves, thereby offering N plus one redundancy for each modular 500 kilowatt condenser. Since there are two modular 500 kilowatt condensers to reject the one megawatt of heat, the external heat rejection system as a whole offers N plus two redundancy. SciCool is a patented, highly efficient, waterless data center heat rejection solution. The condensers have two ways to convert the vapor heat transfer coolant within the pump-assisted thermosiphon heat rejection loop back to a liquid. The first method is passive, where outdoor air flowing over the coils that have the coolant flowing inside them provides the means for condensing. The second method, implemented when ambient air is too warm to provide full passive condensing, is an active approach using compressors. The active condensers, installed in parallel with the passive condensers, consist of brazed plate heat exchangers that have cold heat transfer coolant from a conventional direct expansion process on one side and the thermosiphon coolant on the opposite side. Compressors are staged and modulated to control the active condensing process. Having completed the condensing process, the liquid heat transfer coolant flows back down by gravity to the coolant distribution unit, where the process starts all over again. The residual 1 megawatt air cooling load, in this example, is managed by three Munters perimeter-mounted SciCool 500 kilowatt fan coil arrays that connect with mating roof-mounted 500 kilowatt condensers, providing N plus 1 redundancy. This thermosiphon-based heat rejection process operates similarly to the SciCool liquid cooling process, except no pumps are required and there is no integral redundancy within the fan arrays or condensers. By decoupling the air and liquid cooling processes, each operates optimally for their unique design conditions. This completely waterless solution offers significant savings in energy use with annual power savings reflected in a mechanical PUE for the liquid heat rejection of 1.01 to 1.04 for most USA locations. Additionally, the approach provides the potential for installation cost savings, all while reducing risks associated with single-phase liquid cooling deployments, such as potential leaks or fluid degradation over time. Because it is a two-phase waterless solution, it is also able to cool the most demanding GPUs and CPUs.